Coming up on this edition of the EV Revolution Show, talk about some vehicle-to-grid charging applications. Um, GM, in partnership with LG Chem, talk a little bit about that. Some info news on cars and more. Stay tuned. Well, hello there and welcome. My name is Kenneth Bokor, your host for this edition of the EV Revolution Show, episode 72. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your busy schedules to tune in for the show for the next 20 minutes or so. I've got a few topics I'm going to talk about in the world of the EV electric vehicle revolution that is going on. Let me get right into a few stories I'm following today. First story I thought was pretty cool. There's this British company called AFC Energy, uh, and they've come out with a modular hydrogen-powered platform that can be used as a portable charging station for electric vehicles. Um, it can be fully off-grid and self-sufficient and provide, uh, it's kind of built into a container environment, and it can cover areas that either have poor electrical grid coverage or um, that, that can't support rapid charging or really anywhere where something like this application is needed. But this uh, organization uses hydrogen fuel uh, cell system. Uh, it's designed to fit in a container or containers, and it's offered in three different configurations, providing between two and 100 charge points per site. So it can massively scale when needed. I thought it was a great story to start off today's broadcast with something different, again, something unique to provide uh, energy to battery electric vehicles. Because I've had you know people come up and say, hey, it's a power outage. Got a blackout, you know, the Northeast blackout from a few years ago. Well, you know, these things can be set up, can be deployed uh, with materials that are impacted by no power grids. So good on AFC Energy. Uh, keep your eye out. If you see one of these, let me know. Something a little different here. Now, I get uh, the reports and emails and comments from time to time for people wondering why Nissan is still staying with the Chatamo standard. And one of the main reasons that I've talked about on many occasions is the bidirectional aspect of that charging standard that it operates, that it, it provides. Well, here's an organization. It's the Amsterdam Stadium, uh, the Johan Cruyff Arena, the JCA, if I've got that correct. And the, what they are deploying is a system where people with electric cars could contribute to the power of the arena with their electric cars, and they integrate their car into the stadium's power grid. They're going to have these stations all around the arena. Um, they're, they're, they've just launched, or they are going to be launched. Uh, no, it has, actually. First of 15 bidirectional charging stations um, is now fully operational. And uh, it combines these charging stations with uh, an existing battery storage or power storage system uh, it, at about three megawatts in size, which actually that storage system consists of 148 Nissan Leaf batteries. Again, a great idea for taking some of the older batteries and repurposing them, uh, not necessarily just recycling, because that's another topic that I get asked a lot about what, what happens with old batteries. Here's a case where you can repurpose and reuse. It's a great idea. And using in combination with one megawatt of uh, photovoltaic systems on the roof of the arena, so solar, solar type applications, um, the charging and energy management system that they've put together is fairly innovative as well. In the future, they'll have 2,000 parking spaces to enable visitors to give back clean energy to the stadium. So it ensures that the stadium has uh, a smart way of doing their bit towards the ecosystem. Uh, and as well, this intelligent software that I mentioned will be able to coordinate the energy supply in both directions because it is bidirectional uh, from car to stadium and from stadium to car. So it enables um, electric cars to transfer energy from, from them after their consent. There's a consent issue to uh, boost the current capacity of the stadium, reducing the stadium's electricity bill and contributing to a more stable national grid, which all sounds great. Uh, at the same time, system ensures that the car battery is recharged in time when visitors want to go home. So uh, I don't know if they're going to give you any money for this or give you a free parking or give you some sort of maybe a free hot dog <laughs> when you're watching the game or a free beer. It might be more important to do it. Maybe some incentive if they're asking you to give some of your energy back. But I think it's a great program. The concept, the sky's open, the on and on. So congratulations to Amsterdam for implementing this. Next story is that uh, GMLG partnership that I mentioned at the top of the show. So GM Motor has come out and announced plans to produce battery cells in conjunction with LG Chem. Uh, they were rumors, but they're now confirmed. They're planning to spend about $2.3 billion uh, on the joint venture uh, uh, with uh, the cell manufacturer. 
Um, each of them will hold a 50% share in, in this venture, and it's going to be around the Lordstown plant in Ohio, my understanding. Um, it looks like GM's gonna, gonna position this particular battery cell plant to provide cells for their first pickup truck um, that they're going to be planning for the autumn of 2021. So the time frame would seem right. They get this thing going, starting to build next year, open it for the year after 2021 and start producing, uh, start providing uh, battery cells for that launch of their new pickup truck. So good news. Again, I've talked about insourcing. I've talked about partnerships on many occasions, many shows. We're seeing this constantly uh, happen because of battery shortages and issues that we're, we're experiencing now as we start to hit, you know, going up on that hockey stick growth. Um, things need to catch up and systems and supply chains need to balance out. So good to see GM thinking ahead and putting some things in place. Quick news about the Jaguar on the I-Pace. I haven't talked about them for a while. They've been doing okay. Their sales are fairly uh, okay by their standards. Again, Jaguar is a niche player, uh, but they've just provided an over-the-air update. And again, one of the benefits of the I-Pace is that it does support over-the-air updates. They haven't really pushed that a lot yet, like Tesla does, of course, but they have pushed one out, which actually will claim that uh, it'll give drivers a little bit longer, more range, about 8% more, or could equal to about 12 miles of real-world range without changing anything. Now, it does... Um, it does apply some changes to the torque distribution between the front and the rear motors that will increase efficiencies. It will um, uh, look at the active radiator vane system and make more use of the I-PACE thermal control. And it also will allow the battery to run at a bit lower state of charge than it would have before. So all these little tweaks they've pushed in this update. And if you're an I-PACE owner uh, that gets the update, I'd love to hear what you really experience. Let me know. Quick news, uh, news from Nissan on the Cash K. They have um, announced that they're going to, going to be coming out with um, electrified versions of that. Unfortunately, not an all-electric version like I was hoping, but something is better than nothing at this point. Uh, it's going to be a, there's going to be a plug-in hybrid version, which I'm more excited about, and then an e-power version, which is more like your traditional hybrid we see today that doesn't have any plug-in capacity. Those, as you folks know, I'm not excited about. So I kind of wish they, they, I really hope they stay away from this e-power, but it doesn't look that they're going to for quite some time. So I'd rather them focus on all electric or at least plug-in versions of vehicles. But uh, this, uh, this new uh, Cash K version, Version is going to be expected in Europe in the summer of next year, 2020, uh, with these two versions. They The good news is they're going to drop the diesel version of it, so that's good. Um, and uh, they are going to continue on building a new all-electric platform for some of their battery electric vehicles. We'll have to wait and see announcements on that. Now, this vehicle now, the Cash K, is based on the Renault-Nissan Mitsubishi Alliance's CMF platform, and it, it's not clear whether or not Nissan will actually you know, take some of the the, the guts from the Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV, which, by the way, folks, if you didn't know, is the world's number one selling plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. Don't believe me. Go Google it and look it up. Good for them. We'll see uh, what happens there. I hope that this thing gets some traction. Uh, it's a nice size vehicle here. I see a ton of them in North America, so I'm a little disappointed that it's not a plug-in hybrid version is not coming to North America. I'm hoping that they will build some sort of all-electric version similar to that for us. Stay tuned. Now, here's a vehicle I haven't talked about... <laughs> probably in forever, or almost maybe since one of the first early shows, but the Mitsubishi uh, iMeve, uh, you know, one of the early, again, one of the pioneers in the electric vehicle movement. A lot of people don't give this uh, vehicle any street creds. I mean, yeah, it looks a little bit like an overgrown golf cart or a fancy uh, people mover in those gated communities in Florida. But hey, you know, it was ro it's road worthy, it's street worthy. I, I, I've read some comments and people love these things. They have actually taken them on long road trips. Um, so, you know, kudos to Mitsubishi for this vehicle. Well, it looks like there's a there's a North American recall that's been announced on 2012 to 2017 uh, iMeves. Uh, it's only U.S. spec version iMeves uh, that are, are uh, getting this recall from NTHSA. It's uh, to per pertaining to the brake booster element where you can get some water penetration that can cause some corrosion. And we all know that. Uh, corrosion isn't good for anything metal or any sealed systems, and and of course at some time the bra at some point the uh, brake vacuum pump could fail and causing a loss of braking system. So not a good thing to have. 
Uh, so this is again only for all US spec run vehicles for Mitsubishi made between October 28th, 2011 and June 10th, 2016. Uh, only impacts just over 2100 vehicles. So it's not a huge amount, only about 1% sold. It looks like a lot of these were sold in Asia Pac. Um, owners, if you have one, you'll be issued a letter. You should start getting some letters uh, starting January 7th uh, in a few weeks and uh, with instructions on how, where to take it in and get it fixed. But uh, hey, good to see that these cars are still around. Um, again, I, I've read some comments from people that love these things. They've taken them on long journeys. They're great for urban commuters. They they, they work fairly well. Good, good on them. So uh, if you have one of these, uh, stay tuned. You'll get your letter soon and uh, get it done. Now, as you folks know, I like to talk about other vehicle segments, including mass transit and stuff, which I will be coming up on future shows. But Volvo has announced and shows off a heavy-duty electric concept truck, uh, similar to some of the others that we've seen that are coming out. It's a bigger all-electric truck concept for primarily for construction operations and those type of use vehicles and regional transport. And I've talked a lot about short, medium haul is a gold mine for uh BEV applications, right? Long haul still questionable, but for those regional and short inner city type deliveries, you know, you, you buy a mattress, you need to deliver these kind of applications. All electric vehicles are fantastic for it. And Volvo is coming out with a product to go after that segment. Um, now, this is to follow on on the Volvo FL electric and the Volvo FE electric models. Um, there's not a lot of details other than the photos and videos that you're seeing here while I'm bab babbling away here. Um, but they do expect, uh, because it's regional focus, that it should uh, have a range of about two to 300 kilometers, 124 to 186 miles of real world with cargo. So uh, we'll have to wait and see. Um, Volvo does recognize the potential for this marketplace um, in that regional transport and construction. And they envision a small, uh, what they're going to do is build a small pilot fleet with a, and test this with selected customers in Europe and then proceed from there. So we're probably two to three years away, I would say, from any mass availability of these units as they start to test and pilot, you know, put their toes in the water to see what feedback, but I think these will be very successful and Volvo is a pretty solid company, so good on them. And uh, let's wait and see what they come back with. And finally, a really cool story on on the news that I have today. Uh, a lot of you Canadians may have seen this because it's been broadcast quite a, uh, quite a lot, but we have a company here out of BC called Harbor Air. Uh, they've joined with a company called uh, uh, Magnix and they've announced the first successful flight of, the, of an all electric commercial airplane. Pretty uh, fired up stuff here. We've been getting, again, a lot of press, a lot of momentum from them. Now, Harbor Air is one of North America's largest seaplane airlines. Uh, they run kind of short hop services out of Victoria and Vancouver areas in British Columbia. And uh, Mag Magnetics uh, is the company powering the electric aviation uh, side of that. So they've taken a six passenger DHC 2 de Havilland Beaver. Uh, great planes, and they've added uh, into or, or equipped a 750 horsepower, 560 kilowatt motor uh, or propulsion system for this plane to use. Um, now, the plane was originally, or the system was originally unveiled at the Paris Air Show back in 2019, earlier this year, uh, and it is a high power electric system that provides a clean and efficient way to power airplanes, of course. So um, they did their first test flight, uh, and it went very successful. Everybody was happy, got a lot of press. This is a, specific, a, a unique opportunity, folks, uh, and, and a unique story because it's the first time that this has happened in a, at a commercial level. And the transportation industry, you know, specifically the airline aviation segment, uh, is really, in, in my opinion and many other opinion, a ripe and posed uh, for massive disruption. Certainly, the smaller regional uh, uh, elements, um, is including, you know, the helicopter, the vertical uh, lift and vertical travel uh, elements, um, they are all gearing up we're hearing about drones and all this stuff delivery drones so it is happening and that's a great market to go after because they can really cut their costs down of course on operating costs and acquisition costs now they are going through uh, certifications and approval process with our federal agencies here in canada and i'm sure looking into the u.s markets they will go uh, down that path as well so it's going to be probably another two years or so before we see these things in a live commercial operation but they have taken the first step which is the the key here uh, and I wish uh, Air, uh, Harbor Air all the best.
And finally, my last story is really just more of a thank you. And if you haven't seen it, um, uh, I've been busy tweeting and, and posting some stuff on Instagram and uh, some of the other platforms that I'm on about my uh, my help uh, with the CBC that I provided them. CBC is our national broadcaster here in Canada, and they do a, a nightly news show called The National, and then they do different segments from that news show, different stories following different things. One of the one of the elements was a follow up story to uh, their their first. V- uh, uh, a story that they did back in February this year on electric vehicles, which didn't really come across the greatest. It was a, could could have been more positive. It doesn't necessarily mean it was negative, but it could have been more positive. So um, I was helping these guys out to on various levels within this uh, this three story arc um, to to pitching a couple things to them and then helping them logistically with some of the stuff. So uh, uh, it, it's a great series. I'm going to have the links in, uh, here on the show notes. It's a three part series, and these links just get to that right. You don't have to watch the whole broadcast or skip through it it goes right to those stories so they did a three-night story about electric vehicles they did about the the economics of it about the availability and about the environmental impacts so it was a nice well-wrapped story now you'll see me in, in episode one on a quick cameo because i was able to help them get that kia soul ev that they drove around on that on that uh on that second drive around of the of the kia soul and then I was graciously invited to the studios on uh, the, uh, for the second episode to go on camera and answer a couple of quick questions, couple, only a couple of minutes, uh, you know, two minutes of fame, but it's okay. I was more concerned about uh, providing some, some good answers to some questions that I weren't really sure what was coming. Uh, so that went really well, and I'm very happy with the outcome of that. And then the third episode uh, the night after uh, was a nice way to tie everything up. So I encourage you all to watch it. It'll give you a little bit different perspective maybe on some of the elements about the EV industry that you haven't thought about, or maybe you have and this gives you some updated information but thank it thanks again for for cbc for including me there was a lot of other stuff that they did uh in fact that the green leaf that you see in, in these segments in, in certain clips more so on the third one well that's me because i took them actually for a drive along in my leaf as we went down the highway to go to one of the uh, national drive electric week gatherings that was hosted here in cambridge in the fall and uh, you'll see my nice shiny clean green leaf booting around on the highway from here and here so so they, they did a bunch of other stuff unfortunately due to time and editing not everything could make the floor but i do want to thank everybody that helped with them as well a lot of members here of the local evs society and the chapters uh of uh, vehicle uh, different electric vehicle groups including tesla owners and stuff we were all very active at different elements and different areas uh to help these guys with their broadcasts and thanks very much for cbc and the national for coming out with this i think it was a great time to follow up on your initial story to provide more information to consumers All right, folks, well, that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show, episode 72. Thank you very much for taking the time, sticking through, watching the show. Hope you found it informative. As you folks that have followed me for quite some time know, I try to be a little bit different than the average YouTube show out there. I try to cover the electric vehicle primarily marketplace, but some of the spinoffs a bit from a global perspective to give you more understanding. So I hope that I achieved that goal today. I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, If you uh, have not subscribed on YouTube, please do. That would appreciate uh, would appreciate your subscription and like it if you if you choose to don't forget you can click that bell and get automatically notified when i upload new shows and of course i can always every show i'm humbly uh thankful for my patreon supporters i really appreciate appreciate you folks for sticking with me and supporting me through patreon if you're interested please check out the patreon website link and you'll get more information on how you can support me even a cup of coffee a month will help folks doesn't have to be a lot appreciate it now uh, before i get into the closing comments and and some of the thank yous uh, don't forget fully charged live is coming up uh, february 1st 2nd austin texas i know a lot of people uh, have already bought tickets or a lot of uh, i'm getting messages from people saying that they're going now one one thing i did want to mention is i am going to be on one of the panels it's the saturday panel about how to choose an electric vehicle so i'm looking forward to uh, talking to people and answering some questions about that subject if you're going down please come out look for that on the agenda and you'll find me at that panel but of course you'll find me throughout the show i will have a table or uh, i'll have a space to put all my stuff and hang out uh, throughout the two days so i will be easy to find and thanks for the fully charged folks for uh, helping me out with that i appreciate it 
Uh, also, now, before I get to my final closings, I mentioned on the last show that I'm doing a charity fundraiser. This is a little bit different than what I did last year. So first of all, I want to thank um, uh, one of my viewers. His first name is Khalid. And Khalid is just the generosity of this gentleman was just unprecedented. You know, he lives out of the city. We met up a couple of months ago after communicating and he was kind enough to donate uh, some items for me that, that, that I could do whatever I wanted with. I could keep them or I could sell them, whatever. He didn't need them. He wanted me to have them. I could give them away. Well, I told him that I'm that I, you know, I usually do a charity uh, uh, fundraiser for Christmas uh, for my uh, my favorite charity here in the Greater Toronto Area, which is the Sick Kids Foundation. Uh, it uh, supports the Sick Kids Hospital here in Toronto, which does just amazing things for kids of all ailments. They are just a fantastic hospital and organization. So instead of doing an Eventbrite thing, I've got two items that I'm that I've put on eBay that you can bid on. And Khalid was uh, very nice to donate a brand new set of uh, 2018, 2019, and I believe they'll fit the 2020 Nissan Leaf. These are carpeted floor mats with the Leaf logo on them, and the, the drivers has the circles that you put to the hook so it doesn't slide around. Uh, these are official, genuine Nissan uh, carpet mats, um, the set, and uh, I won't go into all the details because you can go on eBay and read it. I will supply the links in the show notes so please check out the show notes and you'll see the links to the ebay which will send you there uh, these are no reserve auctions uh, so you can bid uh, all i'm trying to do is raise money everything i raise from this will go 100 uh, percent will go to the charity uh, I have put a minimum shipping charge in there because I don't know. I'm opening this to the world, folks. I do have viewers all around the planet, believe it or not. So uh, I'm willing to ship it anywhere. Um, so I need to cover. I need to kind of take a, a stance on how much shipping is going to cost me. I could get. Uh, could cost me a lot more than 50 bucks, or could cost me cost me a lot less. But uh, if you've shipped anything, 50 bucks doesn't really go very far anymore. So I, I, that's the only cavity I have in both these auctions. Now, also, Kelly gave me a brand new set of Tesla. Model 3 floor mats. He uh, he owns a Tesla Model 3. In fact, when when he dropped all this stuff for me, we met. He came down uh, from uh, from uh, outside the GTA, well outside in his Model 3, which was a, a lot of fun. So and I thanked him for for doing that. Um, so he what happened is he picked up his Model 3. These floor mats were in it. He drove it home and then he took them out and put in the WeatherTech ones that he had bought or, uh, because we had a lot of snow up here. So he immediately changed them out. So these are really new. They've just been used from that initial pickup to home and they're clean and they're, they're, they're really, really nice. So um, if you're interested in a set of carpeted floor mats for the Tesla Model 3, these are the two for the front and the one piece for the back, please bid on that. Again, it'll be on eBay and, and I'll provide the link here in the show notes. Go check it out. I encourage everybody to bid. Again, this is a fundraiser for Folks, none of this money I'm keeping, it's all going to go to the Sick Kids Foundation. I will probably add some top-up funding to it as well to make it a little bit easier. So uh, so when I send them the money at the end of it, um, I'll send them one, one nice sum. Now, that's it for the show. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Again, I hope you found it beneficial. All the thank yous are coming up. And until the next episode, please, 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 everybody stay safe. I know Christmas is coming. We're getting to that stress time now. Just remember what's important about the holiday seasons, uh, and I think that will keep everybody de-stressed as much as possible. So until the next show, everybody stay safe, and I'll see you when I see you. Take care, and bye-bye.